Hello everyone, I know this channel is a mess, so uh, I'm just gonna ignore it. The, the fact is, I'm Russian and I just saw a video about how to write a Russian from a non-Russian. Uh, these always go well, right? Uh, well, but uh, surely I can give you some insights on, on the stuff uh, and uh, hopefully fix some mistakes because uh, there are, there are mistakes. And you know, Russian characters from all different types of series are starting to become more and more popular, like Viktor Dikivarov from Yuri on Ice or Russia from Hitalia. Uh, uh, I, 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 I have, 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 have not noticed that. So today I'm going to teach you how to write a Russian. This video is for things like names, how to address each other, and small cultural things. So here is how to write a Russian and might as well tack on Belarusian, maybe Ukrainian. Uh, I'm gonna teach you how to write a lot of Slavs today. Uh, well, that that's kind of fair, but also there are certain differences that, uh, mm, that are not applicable to every country. So, do your research before you actually introduce a character which is from some country. The first thing that most people get confused about is a Russian name. There are three parts to a Russian name. First name, patronymic, and surname. Well, uh, putting it that way is not exactly good. Uh, the, in most cases, we use uh, first surname, or family name, as we call it, then our first name, or just a regular name, just name, and then patronymic. That's, that's how officially we Write, our, write down our names. Each of these have aspects a lot of non-Russians don't really understand. So let's start with the first name. One thing that a lot of non-Russians... Yeah, exactly. Just name. Uh, it's just written email. Name. ...don't understand is diminutives. These are informal names, and there are different types. Absolutely. Every single... Western or Japanese, well, Japanese not, not as much. Uh, every single Western media does not understand that we actually use like shortened, shortened names. You know how Jack is a uh, short... no. There is Jack and John. One of them is a diminutive of, of another one. Well, yeah, that's, that's how it happens in Russian and uh, it happens a lot. The standard diminutives are like nicknames or informal names. Uh, well, uh, kind of, kind of. Uh, well, well, what you see here are our proper names, like what would we actually have in our passports. This is what uh, our friends call us, and this is just uh, just forming. This is just word building. This is just word building. Um, and this is patronymic. This is making a patronymic out, out of the out of the name, uh, which is well, well it's, it's a thing. It's a thing. Uh, but uh, they mostly follow these two mostly follow just word building rules, uh, but do uh, refer to the to to the table. And are used between friends, family, people who are being informal. Well. It, when you put it like that, you make it sound like it's uh, some Japanese strict system. It's not. But just these two tables is enough. You have you have to know the proper names and what the the short names are from those names. That's it. All of that is just word building. Just for for special, very special cases where, uh, well, this is patronymics, so um, usually, usually you can ignore that. Uh, but uh, this, don't, 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 do not care about that much. If your character has a typical Russian name, you can often find the proper diminutive by googling it. For example, Ivan would be Vanya. That's, that, that's, uh, pronunciations in this video are significantly lacking. Uh, well, she's trying, she's trying, I, 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 I commend for trying, but uh, it's so annoying. Every single, especially Western media, does not understand that when we write Y and then A, 
it doesn't mean there is a Y sound. It just says Vanya, Vanya, Nya, Nya, Vanya, Vanya. When you see a Russian word that has a Y and then a vowel, it means there is no Y. It just means that N, the, the, the consonant before it, is soft. It's palatized. Vanya. It's not Vanya. It's Vanya. Natalia would be Natasha. It's not Natalia. Well, it's actually two names. <laughs> well, you remember how I said uh, that uh, if you if you see Y and then A, it means it. Well, not in this case. <laughs> Natalia actually actually it's actually two names. There is Natalia and Natalia. One with a, with a soft sign. Uh, you can see it on screen, like here, and uh, with an E, like like this, um, and uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It, it just it's just inconsistent. Uh, Russian romanization is is stupid. It is completely stupid. Uh, so uh, do your research, please, people, do your research. This this is sur this is very surface level research for you. For her, it's deep research. For, for, for you watching this video and this video, it's surface level. There are also pet names which involve adding even longer suffixes. Well, this is a diminutive. This is just short names. This is diminutive. This is done for children, relatives, and romantic interests. Again, you are saying it like it's like sort of like a rule. It's not. You don't have to do them at all. The way this is done is normally by changing the suffix of the diminutive. So a becomes ochka, ya becomes enka, or sometimes echka, and sha becomes shenka. And then there. Well, she she explained the rules. Uh, 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 we just we just we just feel that we just feel that stuff in Russia. Uh, so uh, if you write a Russian, please ask a Russian. Please ask ask a Russian. You, you probably are on some Discord server. Uh, just ask if anyone is a Russian. There are plenty of other different variants, but if you just click the link I provided in the description, you'll be absolutely perfect. Say you're... Not absolutely perfect. We will see that uh, there are uh, certain things that aren't very true. You're an adult and you're talking to a child who's... Nastinka. His name is Anastasia. Nastyona. No. There is no Nestiona. Well, it's a very colloquial, not very common, not very common to use Nestiona. You would call her Nastienka. Nastinka, Nastinka, not Nastienka. You're saying it like it's, like it's on the wall. It's Nastinka, Nastinka. Nastiona. Nastiona, Nastiona. Y and O, it's soft. Nastiona, Nastiona. Or Nastyusha. 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 Well, it's also not very, very common. You pro, you usually say just Nastinka. Um, well, yeah, just Nastinka. Nastyusha. Nastyush. Nastyush. Yeah, Nastyusha. You can say it, but uh, it, you're usually saying it when you are actually talking to them. And when you're talking to them, you usually drop the A. So you're saying Nastyush. Nastyush, help me. If you were dating someone named Victor, you would call him Vitienka. Vitienka? Niet. I wouldn't. Or Vitiok. Vitiok. It's not for dating. It's actually for group for friend groups. Uh, if you have a friend called Vita, you can call him Vitiok. Hey, Vitiok, chill, chokak. Vitiok, how are you doing? It's just it's uh, it's actually a nickname. Like one of the shortenings of normal Vitali. Again, I would. Vitienka. Vitienka, blin. Vitienka. Recommend looking these up. There's an entire table. Fine. This name is not real. Galina, Gala, Glafira, no. It's it's a name, but it's not a name. Inga, Inna, Irina, Jana. Well, it's it's meant to be Jana, probably. 
right in Capitolina! Capitolina! Sounds like a potato! Capitolina, blin! No, no! Lina! Lina is a name. Is a name on, of, on its own. Kira, not common in Russia. In the description. Lada! Lada, blin! Nobody calls their kid Lada anymore because it's a car. Larissa, Lydia, Lilia, Ludmila. Yeah, Lily, yeah. Well, usually it's just Lilia. Now. Nowadays. The last one is. Lubov. I don't like this romanization. It's. It's written like it's Lubov. No, it's Lubov. Love. Maya. Mm. It exists. Marfa. Yes. Uh, is very informal. Margarita uh, shows us to read, but also Margot. Maria, one of the most common names. Marina, Marta, Martio, Matriona. Uh, no, not, not, not a common name. Milena, no, no. Nadezhda, Nadezhda. Seriously, these harmonizations, I, I hate them. It's not, it's not a critique on the video, it's a critique on the Russian harmonization system because it's trash. It's fucking trash. And often... Natalia, Natalia. Yeah, there are two, two spellings. In Russian there are two spellings too, as I explained. Nina, Nona... Nymphadora, blin! Nymphadora! It's not, it's not, it's not. Press diminutive. Alice, Olympiada! Olympiada! Yeah, let, let's go, let's go our kid Olympics. Oksana. Yeah, no, not Oksana. 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 Pila Gea. Pila Suka Gea. Praskovia. It's just, it's just an old name. Raisa. Ra, ah, Ra, Raisa. No, it's no. Rima. No. Rosa. It's it's a Zita. Rosa. It's not a Rosa. It's a, it's not a Rosa. It's Rosa. Rosa. Ruslana. Well. Not a common name because it's too close to a um, male one. Just adding a. It's not a Shanna, it's a Janna. Like, like, like Jean d'Arc. It's Janna. It's written with a SH, but it's, it's a J. Serafima. Very religious name. K and some. Sofia Svetlana. Taisia exists. Tamara, Tatiana. Times a. <laughs> Ульяна, Валентина, Валерия, Варвара, Василиса, Вера. To a diminutive. By the way, Vera means faith. Also means faith. Uh, Вероника, Виктория, Виолетта, Ксения, Ксения. My... Екатерина. It's a Kate. It's a Russian version of Kate, Catherine. Екатерина. Елена. Also written as Elena. But uh, read as Елена. Елена. Елизавета, it's Eliza. Eva, also written as Eva. Евдокия! Евдокия! It's a name, it's just old. Евгения. Женя, Женя, it's very important. Женя. The romanization is trash. Евфросинья. Фрося. It's, it's, it's dying out. It's dying out, this name. It also add the... Julia, also written as Julia. Still read as Julia. We don't have J as a common sound. Zinaida exists, but dying out. Zoya exists. Feeling of affection, but in many cases it shows a lack of respect. So Katyusha is a cute little girl. Katyusha. 
We don't actually call people Катюша. We, we may say Катюш, как дела? Катюш, how are you doing? Uh, but uh, just saying Катюша is not, not, a, not a common thing. Uh, again, it's... Uh, Ask a Russian when you are actually want when you actually want to use a Russian character. But Katka is that annoying hole. Katka. Katka, it, uh, Katka is uh, a name that the her friend group would call her as a nickname, especially if it's like a gamer group. If in a gamer group there is there is a girl named Katya, she would be called Kat Katka. But uh, it's just because. It's funny. It's not. It's not an actual name. Over there. Moving on to the second part of the name, the patron. Yeah, patronymic. Отчество. Отчество. Mimic. A patronymic is the character's father's name, with Vich or Ovich or Yevich at the end, or Ovna Yevna if you're a woman. Correct. Absolutely correct. The Russian language is very gendered, so if you're non-binary, you're kind of out of luck here. Uh, yeah, yeah. For example, say Liev had a father whose name was Simon. You would call him Liev Simonovich. Or if... Yes, Simonovich. If Irina Putina's father was named Vladimir, her full name would be Irina Vladimirovna Putina. Oh, Putina. It's Putin. Vladimir Putin. Putin? No, it's not Russian. Uh, and the whole Irina Vladimirovna Putina is a correct order to say these words in. Patronymics are a very important and often forgotten part of a Russian name. They are not very important, but they are forgotten too much. To they are forgotten too much because. They are very important in how you address a Russian, Russian style. Yes. Let us review the ways to address a Russian. I will give examples using Ivan Vasilievich Braginsky. Ivan... By the way, pronunciation on that, it's alright. Ivan Vasilievich Braginsky. Vasilievich. Uh, but with these long words, uh, we actually drop the year. Uh, and V, Yev, we drop that part, and uh, it often co comes out as Vasilich, Vasilich. We will cover that a bit later. You are being respectful and formal. Probably Ivan is your superior or just much older than yourself. Yes, exactly. That's how you are supposed to treat your elders and teachers and everyone except your parents. And uh, grandparents, of course, obviously. Or else you are work colleagues, and your status is rather equal, but... Uh, if you are writing like 40 year old in, in the past. No, not, not today. But you are very formal with each other. It's like saying Mr. Nikiforov. This is why patronymics are so important. Ivan. You are Ivan superior, or much older than him. Or else you are friends. Um, yeah, pretty much. You do use full name when you are kind, kind of formal, but not not too formal, or you just don't remember their full name. Uh, yeah. Or else the atmosphere is just really informal. Or you are an. Ig well, it's still formal. It's a formal way to address to a person, but it's not that formal that you have to use full name. Ignorant Westerner that doesn't know any of this stuff. Or that. Braginsky Ivan Vasilievich. Ivan is visiting a passport office or a polling station, and you need to be quite sure that it is him, because there is possibly a hundred Braginskys in your district. Uh, not a hundred, but twenty, maybe ten, probably ten. Uh, also, uh, it's it's also very much used as a, as a um, you you done wrong, kid. Uh, you 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 done really wrong. Come here, Braginsky Ivan Vasilich. Uh, yeah. Gospodin Braginsky, or if you want to be a woman, Gospoja Bragin. Oof. Oof on that pronunciation. Gospodin. Gospoja. Gospodin and Gospoja. Russian, Russian stresses are not very regular. Russian stresses, Russian stresses are not very regular. So uh, it's hard to predict, and I can understand that, but 
of, sorry, господин and госпожа. Брагинский. Брагинская. Брагинская. Иван is a businessman. Your relations are about business. And you try to be either very correct or western style. Or you want to be subservient to him. Yes. Yes, pretty much. You, you trying to be western. Товарищ Брагинский. Товарищ. Товарищ. Also, see that spelling? S-H-C-H. It comes from... Uh, it's not how we read it anymore. In some Slavic languages, it still is pronounced like that. Товарищ. Борщ. Everything with ш is pronounced with ш. Или uh, Because that's what, our, that's what the latter used to be like. Now, in Russian, specifically in Russian, not in, a, not in all Slavic languages, uh, see, um, sh, the letter sh, it only means sh. So it's just tavarish, tavarish, tavarish braginsky. You are both members of the Communist Party or in the military. Uh, not doing that. Only, so only if you write like a 50 or even 60 year old media you are going to be using tavarish, which also means comrade. Yeah! Comrade, you know? You know comrade? The one word that uh, every single western media tries to use whenever there is a Russian in the plot? Comrade that is not in use? Like for, for 40 years? Гражданин Брагинский or Гражданка Брагинская. Not Брагинская, Брагинская, Брагинская. It's very rare that you have uh, your your family name change stresses between genders. Гражданин Брагинский, Гражданка Брагинская. You are a judge, a lawyer, or a policeman, and pretty much just a policeman. Just a policeman or any, anything criminal, you are being referred to, to as, a as a Grzdanin, as a citizen. And Ivan is arrested. Braginsky. You are being... Braginsky. Braginsky. Very apprehensive or disciplinary with Ivan. Or perhaps you just want to show your utmost contempt for him. Not, uh, not always. Uh, not as common now, but uh, like 30, 20, 30, and then before, it was a common way to talk between children, uh, to address uh, children between each other, like by their family name, because there are often often very similar names, like Nastya, Katya, too, too many to, to, to just distinguish. Uh, and uh, I said before that uh, this is how it used to be, and it's not used now, but uh, it still lurks. It lurks about, so it's not it's not that disciplinary. the The disciplinary way is is that is saying the full name. Maybe you are a prison guard, and he is a prisoner. Yep, that that's that's a correct correct uh, circumstances to use it. Or perhaps you are a very conservative school teacher who is very strict with rules and discipline. Uh, no, it's just how you refer to kids, to the kids, uh, by their family name, because that's that's easier to remember kids' name, kids' family names than their first names, and especially when their first names often often not the same. Or perhaps you are his wife and he is in the doghouse for something. No. No. That's not how it works. And you are using this rough way to address him that is slightly endearing. Atiets Braginsky. Ivan is a priest. And you are an Orthodox layman. Yes. Atiets means father. So it's Father Braginsky. Dyadya Vanya. Dyadya. Dyadya. Not Dyadya. It, it's Dyadya. Dyadya Vanya. You are a child. Ivan is your older relative, or just an adult from the same neighborhood. Yep. Vanya. Ivan is a child, or an adolescent. Or else you are close friends or relatives, and Ivan is your... Not just close friends. Any friends. That's how most people will refer to you if, you're, if your name is Ivan. 
you will be called Vanya. Vanya. Equal or younger than you or less important than you. Vanka. No. No. It's not. It's not a thing. It's not a thing. Vanka is not a thing. We are skipping this part. Odd, but most likely you don't like him. This is the trickiest form because it can be both endearing and... We are skipping this part. Ivan, like a Vanyusha. father, mother, sibling or wife. Yeah, yeah. Vanyusha. Vanyush. Vanyusha. Well, no, I, w I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say that, but like, it's, it's, it actually, it exists, it at least exists. Or a total BFF, like his number one BFF. No, 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 no. BFFs would call him Vano, Vanyok, Ivanidze, Vandal, a any, any sort of nickname. That is kind of that has the word van in it. Or you're his lover. You might also be a colleague trying. Vanichka, Vanichka, Vanichka is is better than Vanyusha. Vanichka. Be super informal, perhaps flirting with Ivan, yes. or trying to get Ivan to do something for you. I I'm not sure about uh, our gay culture, but uh, uh, if it's you know, if it's a woman, it's uh, it's a common. It's a common to flirt like that. Vasilievich. Not Vasilievich. Vasilich. In this context, she will explain it right now, we drop the F part a lot. Alexandrovich actually changes to Sanich. It's a very common between old people to, to talk to each other using their patronymics only. Like that. Vasilich. You're both not young anymore, very informal, and like to share a bottle or just a good joke. Now- Yep, exactly, exactly. Now for the part of the video I've been meaning to discuss for a really long time, the gendered surname. You can't just take Ilya Slaskov and gender bend her into Irina Slaskov. You'd have to change it to Irina Slaskova. Slaskova. This is a very common mistake. It is very much is in the Tekken community uh, we have we have the character called Dr Drugunov lots of people in very respectable people when suggesting to to make a gender band version for for say Tekken 8 they still use Dr Drugunov family name to refer to as a woman it's not it's Drugunova Drugunova I see way too often. No, Momoiro Planet, you cannot just take a random name without gendering it and- Yes, so many uh, quote-unquote Russian characters in media, women, female Russian characters in media, have their, have their family name completely ungendered. Look, Natasha Romanov. Yeah, it's Romanova. Actually, they changed it. In, changed it in the comics later, to 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 actually spell out Nat Natalia Romanova. Say it's Russian. That's not how it works. It would be Natasha and Anastasia Andreevna. Andreevna. Arinskaya. For. I I I I either Arinskaya or Arinskaya. I I'm I'm not sure about that family name. And now for some other things that I think I should mention to help flesh out a Russian character some more. Tea customs. Uh, Russians love tea. Like, they, they really freaking love tea. We do. A lot. They have some, um... You, uh, you come to someone's house, you, uh, first question is would you like some tea? Unique customs in drinking their... Uh, by the way, this thing is called samovar. We are not using it anymore, it's for, well... These kind of customs for extremely old stuff. Some people know how to use them. I don't. Nobody does. Usually, really. Their tea, like they add a lot of sugar to it, and they not not that much sugar. It depends. Depends on the person. Uh, but uh, standard is uh, two, 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 two teaspoons of sugar. They put some jam in it. We don't. We don't. We eat it with jam. Or we will put jam in it when we are sick. 
when we are sick we are drinking a lot of sugar tea because it's uh, supposed to give you a lot of energy to come with the disease and then they eat it with some more like cakes and stuff like that yes we also eat with, we eat we drink tea with cakes that's how tea goes and then they dip those cakes into the tea it depends not anymore Russian tea is like super diabetes. It is. It is. Russians always write in cursive. Uh, yeah. Yes. In cursive. And that cursive is mostly legible. You don't blame us! You have bad writing too! In, in your countries! You know I'm not wrong! Women must cover their heads when entering an Orthodox church. You they do. You can still show hair, but the head needs to be covered by some kind of scarf. And almost all Orthodox churches require this. Yeah, they require this. Even if you are not religious, you have to do it. Unless they're super touristy or communisty. Also, for you Catholics and Protestants trying to write an Orthodox church, let me. For you Catholics and Protestants trying to write an Orthodox church, let me remind you. What? What are you trying to do in Orthodox Church? Right? Right? I'm sorry, what? There are no seats in Orthodox Churches. Yeah, there are none, usually. One does not simply sit in an Orthodox Church. Yep. No. These are not places to just stay in. This is, these are places to pray and stuff. You know, and just culturally inspire. Not all people in Russia are white. Very much. Or even Russian. Russia is a very diverse place. Well, diverse is... It's not diverse, it's just very, very big. And when you live in... in when there are a lot of people in a very, very big country, you gonna have a lot, a lot, a lot of different nationalities. Like you can see Buryaty, Tuvane, Altaitse. Full of hundreds of different ethnicities. But often those places have their own administrative regions. Mm, it's complicated. Also, the Russian language is really gendered, so I would not recommend just popping certain sentences into Google Translate and using them in your book. In fact, well, um, when you know you are using an idiom, like this one, you don't do that. You try using specialized dictionaries for that. Or, you know, ask a Russian! Also, why is this Google Translate in Kazakh? Well, that was it. Uh, that was a fun video. Again, do your research on your own when you are writing Russian characters. Ask a, ask a Russian! Really, really, really do! Ask a Russian! Because you will fail! Of course, I'm joking. Do what you want, but like, come on, like, don't make them drink vodka or do other like dumb stereotypes. And, and this surface level research is is all right. It just won't be very cringe when if you follow this advice. But please, if you do, if you are doing something serious, ask a Russian, like really.